What is going on YouTube? Uh, Andrew Miller from HookemHeadlines.com coming back at y'all today uh, with my post-game reaction and analysis to uh, Texas's nail-biter of an 85-83 win over OU. Um, Texas moves to 21-6 and on the season overall and then 10-4 and in the Big 12 with this, uh, with this win over OU. Uh, Texas is also able to sweep the regular season series against OU uh, with Two wins by a combined three points. Uh, so they played two games coming right down to the wire against the Sooners. But, you know, I always mention it in the Big 12. A, a win is a win. Um, you know, you obviously like to see Texas get a lot more separation, win this game by a more comfortable margin, and, you know, really take care of business, shut the door on the last unranked opponent on the regular season schedule, at least as it stands now, the last uh, four opponents that Texas has during the regular season all ranked actually inside the top 20 um, with the next game coming up against number 19 Iowa State at the Moody Center on Tuesday night. Um, but give a couple other important notes that I have from this game and, um, you know, really what my thoughts and analysis are coming out of this overtime win. Uh, you know, this win boosts Texas back into sole possession of first place in the Big 12. Um, that will last for at least a couple more hours until we have the decision of the uh, – or at least the winner of the Baylor-Kansas game, which is currently in the second half. We're recording this around 4.30 um, on the afternoon of February 18th. Um, so right now, Baylor's winning 45-42. Both those teams sit at 9-4 and four in conference play right now. Uh, the winner will uh, move back into a tie with Texas at the top of the Big 12 standings. Um, you know, a few more things that this win does for Texas. It continues the home winning streak for the Longhorns. I believe that is now at a half dozen games um, since Texas had that really just defensive meltdown against Kansas State uh, to open up Big 12 play at home. Um, I believe that was back on January 3rd. Uh, Texas has won each of the last six. Granted, two of the closest games at home, two of the closest wins at home have come over the two teams that are in last place in the Big 12 standings right now. Um, that leads me into my next kind of important note here. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this is the bottom teams in the Big 12 getting better or, um, you know, Texas running into a tough stretch here lately um, and just not playing at their best. But Texas has now nearly lost at home uh, to the team that is, I believe, now in last place in the Big 12 standings at OU. And they also uh, suffered a seven point loss on the road against Texas Tech. Uh, the team that was in last place in the Big 12 standings at the time um, that came on Monday night. And so overall, there there is some, you know, cause for concern there as Texas again runs into a gauntlet to finish out the regular season because they have four more ranked opponents, two of which come on the road. So, uh, you know, th this Texas team, they're going to have to continue to pick up their play. Um, you know, they've, they've looked solid against ranked opponents uh, throughout the season, and that's going to have to hold true down the stretch. You got... Um, namely Kansas and Baylor remaining on the regular season slate. Uh, two teams that you at least need to split those games uh, if you not only want to win the Big 12 regular season title, but also challenge for uh, one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, so a couple other notes that I had coming out of this game. Um, you know, I'll start, I, I always do a studs and duds list on, on the website. I'll link that in the description below as always. Um, but, you know, I, I can't go recapping this game without mentioning the solid performance that we saw from uh, senior wing Serge Barry Rice. He was fantastic again, uh, gave Texas uh, two dozen points off the bench, played 34 minutes. He was 8 of 13 shooting from the field, 4 of 6 from beyond the arc, 4 of 5 from the free throw line. Um, he really, down the stretch in this game, couldn't miss, had a trio of important threes that at one point to, uh, put Texas ahead down the stretch. He was really getting the energy going in the Moody Center. And, uh, you know, just really continue to provide that, like, ultra-valuable spark off the bench that, that Texas has needed. I mean, this is multiple wins now where I, I have a hard time saying that Texas wins those games without Serge Barry Rice's uh, bench production. Um, and just his just generally efficient offensive output. I mean, in this game, he also gave Texas two assists, not to mention the 13 field goals, eight of which he sunk. He didn't have a single turnover. Um, you know, we're talking about 15 possessions here that he either, what, scored, had an assist, or at least got a shot up. 
and none of which he turned the ball over. This was a pretty sloppy second half uh, for Texas by all considerations. Um, you know, I, I, they nearly doubled up OU's turnovers in the second half at one point. But, you know, Timmy Allen had three turnovers. Dylan Basu had three turnovers. Um, but, you know, two of the most important players here, Marcus Carr and Serge Barry Rice, combined for no turnovers on the game. So um, that was huge. Um, you know, another stud that I wanted to mention that I wanted to get some props to is Brock Cunningham. Um, he, outside of kind of a bad foul that he took late in this game, um, you know, they kept OU hanging around. He was really solid. Uh, he was given a, or he was given Texas a lot of energy, um, again, coming off the bench, four offensive rebounds in this game, uh, four assists, just one turnover and one steal. Um, also had a hand in helping force multiple turnovers from the Sooners. Uh, you know, he was really getting involved in some of those gritty plays we're used to knowing from Brock Cunningham, um, you know, giving Texas some extra possessions. And, you know, he really showed off that new tool in his game that he's had the last couple of years from beyond the arc. He goes two of three. He had two really important three pointers to you know give Texas a spark when they kind of got off to a slow start in the first half. Um, he winds up going four of seven from the field, finishes with 10 points, four rebounds, four assists and one steal off the bench. So a really solid game from Brock. Um, also wanted to give uh, some shouts to uh, Timmy Allen. Timmy Allen had his struggles in this game. The main reason why I didn't make my studs list was because of his kind of woes shooting from the free throw line. Um, he missed, I believe it was the front end of one or two one and ones that uh, were key. <laughs> you know, when you look at the fact that Texas went into overtime, he was one of three from the line this game. Um, nine rebounds, four assists, three steals, but he did have uh, three turnovers. And while he did go seven of 13 from the field, he only put up 15 points. I mean, take into account he's averaging just like one, um, a little more than one point per field goal attempt and that he turned the ball over three times. In terms of his net efficiency on the offensive end, it was decent. I wouldn't say it was the best version of Timmy Allen that we've ever seen, though. So... I uh, would like to see him a little bit more efficient um, from the free throw line and taking care of the basketball um, in the next few games. Um, two players that I was that I was a little questionable about coming out of this game, uh, Christian Bishop, he was my dud on the list um, for this game. He really just didn't make much of an impact off the bench on this game. Um, you know, he's been Texas's second most productive bench scorer for most of the season behind uh, behind Serge Barry Rice. Uh, but Bishop just gets 10 minutes off the bench in this game. He goes one and two from the field, has one turnover, four personal fouls, and two points. He was struggling to really establish any sort of post presence in this game, especially on the on the offensive end, and that limited what Texas could do at times. You know, he's been a pretty notable post presence in a lot of games this season, but this game just was not one of them. And uh, you know, I, he's going to have to be big down the stretch for Texas because he's one of these important senior leaders that can give Texas a spark off the bench. Um, the last thing I wanted to say in terms of kind of duds from this game, uh, Tyrese Hunter, you know, it's two dozen minutes, which is limited compared to what he's been getting the last few games, especially considering we had overtime in this one, you know, Marcus Carr and Timmy Allen both playing more than 40 minutes in this one. Um, Tyrese Hunter finishes two of seven from the field, one of two from the line. He had an important miss at the line late in this game. Uh, he also had two turnovers. He did have three steals, so I have to give him props there. At least he did show up. He really had that like locked in focus and concentration that we've seen from him at times on the defensive end. That's the type of like tenacity and grit that we need from Tyrese Hunter, not just on defense, but on both of them ends of the floor. Um, you know, if he's really going to contribute to a winning Texas team down the stretch and in the postseason. Um, but all in all, it, it, it was just kind of another quiet game from Hunter. Five points in 24 minutes. Um, you know, for a guy that really needs to be a critical part of this backcourt unit. Um, we've seen him stay in the slump at this point for more than half the season now. Um, he got off to a solid start, and in the last, like, two, three months, he's been pretty quiet. So I uh, hope to see him come with a little bit more energy. I guess a positive here is that, you know, three steals, showing more defensive focus, um, and so hopefully he can provide a spark there while finding his shot on offense as well. Um some team notes and, you know, just a couple of things I noticed in this game um, from a positive perspective for Texas. 
you know, you continue to manage to pull out some of these close games. You know, Texas hasn't been great in close games by any means this season, but I, I would say that they've been good. Um, this is now, I think it's, what, two overtime? Yeah, two overtime wins. Texas is now two and one in overtime on the season. Being able to get those overtime wins and find that sort of perseverance down the stretch, even if, you know, the team you're playing, you're supposed to beat by maybe even double digits, as was the case in this game, because Texas was a double digit favorite pregame over OU. But, you know, being able to close out these games and find just find a way to win, that's experience that's going to come in handy in March and April. Um, you know, another positive that I like from Texas in this one, while they were getting outscored in points in the paint by, what was it, 24 to 12 in the first half, they end up closing that gap. Um, they're finding a way to get the offense going a little bit more from inside the arc in the second half and in overtime. They do ultimately lose uh, the points in the paint battle by uh, six, but you know, being able to close that gap in, um, if you're just looking at second half and overtime, winning that margin by six is still big. Um, and then the last thing that I really noticed from Texas, just in terms of like a game planning uh, and flow of the game perspective, uh, really had to do with the uh, the, the settled uh, the settled half court offense. Um, you know, I mentioned when I was doing my bold predictions for this game that I thought. Uh, you know, the high ball screen, pick and roll, uh, dribble handoff were, were a few set plays that Texas could run to be able to, um, you know, get some opportune high percentage looks. Uh, Marcus Carr and Serge Barry Rice are two of the three uh, most efficient uh, scores in the Big 12 in terms of dribble handoff uh, scoring. Um, that data comes from Synergy. It's uh, just put together by points per possession. But um, they were also two of... Uh, two of the top 80th percentile scores in the Big 12 this season um, when you're looking at pick and roll scoring points per possession as well. So um, I, I thought that there were ways that Texas could get involved with uh, Serge Barty Rice and Marcus Carr, um, you know, as the two initiators um, in the screen game. And, you know, Texas definitely tried to get that going. They had, you know, a few dozen possessions where they either ran uh, dribble handoffs or pick and rolls and, um, the handoff game worked pretty well. It was Texas was uh, near one and a half points per possession on handoff plays, but they only ran that about five or six times. Um, it was like somewhere in the ballpark of two dozen pick and roll plays, which is you know higher volume than Texas usually runs the pick and roll this season. And OU has traditionally not been a good defense against the pick and roll, and uh, Texas just couldn't really figure it out, especially. Um, you know, when the offense was starting to go dry in the second half. Uh, Texas, I, what I saw in this game from Texas that, you know, was the biggest issue for me in terms of running the pick and roll was that they didn't really take the space that OU gave them. Texas was dribbling into the aggressive man defense that OU likes to play, whereas OU has been torched by a lot of teams this season. They rank, I believe it's, sec it's either second from the bottom in the Big 12 or last. It was a pretty close margin heading into this one, but um, in terms of points per possession allowed on pick and roll plays, um, and they were last in the Big 12 on dribble handoff, uh, depending. And so, you know, I, that looked like a prime opportunity for Texas to find some offense in abundance for Rice and for Carr. And um, in terms of points per possession, it was around 0.8, which is uh, about 2.2 2 points per possession lower than the season average, which is a sizable margin. Texas really just was not doing themselves any favors, again, with how they were initiating the pick and roll. Sometimes dribbling the air out of the basketball, waiting too long to get the offense, or to get the offense set. Um, the lack of post presence also had something to do with uh, Texas's struggles in the pick and roll game. Um, Texas not having a threat near the rim was able, or meant that OU was able to expand their defense out a little bit, bring a big man out closer to the perimeter and put more pressure on the perimeter when uh, Texas was trying to run some of those high ball screens or pick and rolls. And so, uh, you know, I, there's one thing for me that's an easy fix there, and that's just don't dribble into aggressive man-to-man -man defense so much. Take what the defense gives you. Texas had some had some chance for some spot-up threes off the pick. And, um, you know, sometimes you just saw Rice or Carr pass that up. Sometimes... 
Um, you know, you just saw Texas try a little too hard to force things in, inside the arc. Take the easy shot. I know that Carr went 0 of 7 from 3 in this one. He was ice cold shooting from deep. But, you know, if he takes what the defense gives him and is just a little bit more aggressive and timely with those shots, find his spot, you know, he's going to get going eventually. He's still a good three-point shooter shooting around 30, like around 38, 40% from deep this season. So uh, that's that was, a, that was a negative that I had noticed. I didn't think that Texas had executed the pick-and-roll game near as well as they could have. Um, but they were also limited by the lack of a – of a true paint presence on offense. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, this is still a big win for Texas. You're going to take wins however you can get them in the Big 12 at this point. Um, but you have four important ones coming up on the schedule. On Tuesday night, you've got Iowa State at home. And then you close out with two games on the road against Baylor and TCU. That uh, comes uh, against Baylor and Waco next Saturday. And then um, TCU in Fort Worth is on March 1st. Regular season finale is March 4th at the Moody Center against number five, Kansas. Got some critical games. I would say if you're Texas, you need to come up with at least probably two or three wins to close out this season. Um, because, like I said, the winner of this Baylor-Kansas game this afternoon um, is going to sit, still sit in a tie with you in first place. So some critical games ahead, really important for seeding and for selection Sunday. But anyway, for Andrew Miller, Hogan Headlines, that's pretty much it. We'll go.